Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. I'm going to go ahead and read one of these questions. And first, there was somebody saying, uh, Nick Myers here, he said he has a 1K live account, max three pairs. Uh, this week, he had four different Euro NZD trades since Tuesday, uh, by 01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. And he said the 0 0.04 was up majority of the time, but the others were down. He said this morning, all the trades closed, the 0 0.01, the 0 0.02, and the 0 0.03 um, closed with a loss, but the 0 0.04 close to the gain. Uh, so I want to go ahead and show you this so you can understand. Um, Nick, so the way that this strategy of Gearbox works is if it gets into a bad trade, even with the later entry, it's going to go ahead and cost average. So in your case, you know, I'm not sure what level you were entering on. You said a uh, swing and Euro NZD. So chances are you entered on a level two, but you had a 0 0.01 lot size deployed there. Uh, what would end up happening as it cost averages is that technically these trades can be negative and as long as the one can make up the difference to exit all the trades with a profit it's most of the time going to just get out of that sequence um, it's not looking for the first few trades to be positive it's looking for the larger position to be able to cover the negative positions and get out of the trade uh, so you know really good stuff i, I i'm glad you asked that i, I do want to start covering some more beginner knowledge on these calls in the beginning, because uh, I, I forget sometimes that we have brand new people coming in week to week and they may not know what a ghost trade is. They may not know what cost averaging is. So sometimes it's good to cover that stuff. Um, Molly said she didn't get an email for the one day or one hour reminders to either Gearbox or Variable. Molly, I'm not sure why that is. We'll have to check into that. Uh, as always, it's good to be in the Telegram. Uh, we always send announcements in the Telegram. Uh, Pepper Bradford said he had a 1% gain this week with 0.3% Drawdown is first week of live trading, over 10% last month in demo. That's awesome, Pepper. Um, I see Dominic Plevenik here said 20% on aggressive account, 22% DD. Ronald said 3% profit on swing, double take profit, 1% DD. Uh, Practic said 2.85% for the week with a maximum 1% drawdown. Mariska said Netherlands, no profit, stop loss in on NZD JPY. Drawn at the moment around 27%. You know, Mariska, I saw that uh, that NZD JPY stop loss approaching myself and uh, on one of my accounts, and I, I took off the stop loss on that first trade because I saw that exact thing happening on my larger account, and I was not looking to take that loss today. Uh, NZD JPY has been a problem child for uh, us since, you know, November for anyone who's stuck in that trade. Um, you know, something can only go up so much before it comes down, right? Um Fleming Finn boys said he's from Denmark. Awesome. Uh, Dominic Plevnik, 5% conservative account with 2% drawdown. Uh, Subayal said he's excited to be in the first Gearbox Zoom meeting. Awesome. Uh, Subayal, thank you so much for being in the Gearbox meeting this morning. Uh, Karina said one account met 3% profit, two accounts met 0.3% profit, both live accounts. That's awesome. Uh, Satish here. I was using demo on my gearbox until last week, but last week I removed demo account and I added a 5k live Euro account, double TP. Please note, I rebooted my VPS before moving my demo on the weekend. Then I removed the demo to set up the same. Uh, it was working fine. My live account is having some issues. It's been one week. There's no trade. It shows negative one for buy and sell in all pairs while an expert tab it's opening ghost trades. Uh, yeah, I, I'll take a look at those screenshots. Um, you may want to make sure that you have master mode fully working and that you, uh, you don't have any blank charts open. Uh, we did notice some issues where there, if you have a blank chart open and you use master mode, or if you have a, a chart that doesn't have gearbox on it, uh, we're using master mode that sometimes it can turn master mode off. Uh, so great, great thing to look at. Make sure that you don't have the MyFX book EA open or any other chart open that does not have gearbox or gearbox manager on it. You only want to have charts currently with Gearbox and Gearbox Manager on it. Any other charts without those on it will turn off your master mode. Um, 
Rana said no trade opportunities for two weeks however I'm on sniper you know Rana I've I've experienced very much the same uh, on some accounts um, the, you know the market just hasn't been moving that crazy uh, for some of the sniper positions to to execute uh, swing has been getting some executions um, Jasmine said she's trading on a live account about six percent drawdown max first trading four uh, do, do, do. is there a plan in the future to support some pairs which are not usually traded with EAs for example gold um, yeah you know there's there's plans but we haven't you know we haven't gotten there yet uh, Stephen Raff said 15.3% on Gearbox since January 13th start. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Luke said 5.3% on Sniper double TP. Three trades for 180 pips, max 50 pips drawdown. That's just awesome. Uh, Christopher said, can it be avoided to lose charts and updates? I manage different accounts for people, and this is a lot of work each time. Uh, Christoph, the losing of charts on updates has nothing to do with the software and absolutely everything to do with the VPS and the speed of the VPS. Um, because of that, we are working on more VPS solutions and upgrades um, to you know, speed up those processes. Because again, um, that has nothing to do with actual EA. We don't choose whether the EA is causing it to fall off a of charge or charts close. Um, that's an actual MetaTrader problem uh, and DPS problem with processing with updates, um, especially when you're running a lot of charts, right? You know, many of us were on other products were using one, two, three charts on EAs. Previously, that was no problem. With, once you start having accounts with 24, 25, 18, you know, however many pairs open, uh, things start to get slowed down a bit and that can cause some issues. Um, Christoph, if you're not using the new performance update in master mode, that might help you. Um, I would check that out and make sure you don't have uh, any of the extra stuff. Uh, da, da, da. Tim said, 50K swing account up 2% this week, in and out of four trades this week, all closed now. Would love to get more trades. Thinking about going from three max pairs to six. Thoughts? Um, Tim, I'm going to give you my thoughts. Uh, max pairs, when I increase it from three, I tend to be playing on smaller accounts. On larger accounts, I tend to be more conservative. You're playing with 50K account. It's kind of up to you. Um, but I would stick to three unless you're going to decrease your lot size from the traditional rule of thumb being you're playing with larger capital. Um, so let's go right into it here. And uh, I see some Q and a here as well. Um, I see a great question about the moving average and gearbox. Uh, I'm going to be honest, all the data that we have here is based around that moving average. We have not changed it. We don't play with it. Um, you know, I'm not a, uh, I don't educate on it purely because it would make everything in the strategy completely different. Um, that's why it's not educated on, uh, JS, uh, is simply because, you know, that one change with that strategy could change all of this data and make all of everything we're educating on irrelevant. I actually thought about completely hiding the moving average setting, but I figured there might be some people who know what to do with it. So I left it there. Um, but again, we don't educate on it because it's not something that many users should really play with um, based on historical data. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, hi, Tyler. I hope you're welcome to be possible to incorporate the balance protection amount as well as a notification drawn on the Gearbox Manager. Um, Practic, we're actually going to be adding a ton of things to the Gearbox Manager soon. Uh, our goal is to look to add every single Gearbox setting into the Manager in the coming weeks. Uh, Tim writes, I can change my lot size during the week without having to reset your account, therefore resetting ghost trades. Tim, you cannot change any settings during the week uh, without it resetting your ghost trades. So it's best that you find the settings you want to use on Sunday night and let it go. Uh, Andy said, can you talk about the difference in double take profit and ghost plus real? I think a lot are unsure about that. Great question. Let's get back right into that. So uh, first things first, let's take a look at this. All right, here's how we're going to make this make sense. So if you're using ghost plus real trades, and let's say you're entering on a gear five. So you enter on gear five right here. And let's say you're just using double take profit. You're going to go for 60 pips. That's going to be your take profit. Okay, now if you're using ghost plus real, it's going to calculate what the take profit of this gear five trade would have needed to be to get out of all of these trades profitable, even though you may not be in these trades because they're in the ghost server behind the scenes, meaning that they're being taken in a notepad, they're not on your live account, it's still gonna calculate the take profit it would need 
to actually get out of all these trades profitably. Um, so that's the difference between Ghost Plus Real and Double TP. Double TP is going to go for 60 pips and just focus on this entry. It's going to ignore the fact that any of these entries even exist. And then Ghost Plus Real is still going to calculate the take profit based on if these entries actually were existent. Lewis Scott's at 2% so far for February. Awesome so far, Lewis. Nick Meyer said, can you explain what you said about adjusting lot size and max fares for bigger balance accounts? Uh, all I'm saying with bigger balance accounts is the larger I play with capital, the more conservative I tend to be, not more moderate, right? Anytime you're going over three max pairs trading, you're going from a conservative strategy to a somewhat moderate strategy. And when I'm playing with larger balances, I personally choose to be more conservative because you have more capital in the game. I tend to be more moderate with smaller capital. Again, it's up to you to decide how you want to go about managing your own money. Um, again, that's the perks of having such a powerful software like Gearbox is you're in full control. Um, just on my end, I'm always going to lead to the more conservative side of things because I'm all about risk management and capital preservation um, at this point in my career. Uh, Kristen said, if I change the starting lot size and manager settings, do I have to add and remove the EA and other charts or how can I force the charts to pick up the new setting? Uh, Christian, great question. You just simply go ahead and hit the strategy you want to use on the manager and it'll reapply, uh, the new settings to all the charts. Can you increase max first trading midweek? Would it have to be done in each chart to stick and would it reset ghost trades? Uh, Alex, great question. And I'm glad you asked this. So I'm going to actually cover it uh, real quick because I think it's very important. So let me give me a second. I'm just going to pull up a VPS. This is a great question here uh, for this week. Connect to VPS. Awesome. All right. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So the first thing um, that I want you to know about what's going on with the max pairs is no, you don't have to change it for if you, this is a yes or no question, Alex. If you are trying to increase the max pairs, you can actually just increase it on one chart and it'll only reset the ghost trades on that one chart, but it'll actually take effect globally. Meaning if you had max pairs three and you wanted to increase it to four for the entire account, you could do that on one chart. Now you can do that for increasing, but you cannot do that for decreasing. Meaning that if you were, if you had all the charts on three and you changed one to two, it's still going to take effect as three because it's going to look for what the highest uh, option is on any of the charts. Um, but you can take this and make it global. If I was to change this to four, it would take effect globally on the account, uh, even though other charts say three. Now, if I was to take it from three to two, it's still going to read three because other charts say three and that's the highest one. So I hope that that answered. Uh, your question there, Alex. Uh, Daniel Torres said, how's double TP calculate after it opens two or three trades in the sequence? Uh, Daniel, at that point, it's going to be doing the same math that it needs to do uh, based on Ghost Plus Real, except the difference is with Ghost Plus Real, it's going to calculate the take profit it would have needed to get out of the ghost trades and the real trades with a profit. Now, let's say you entered a, a level five trade here with the 60 pip take profit, and then you have to enter level six and level seven. Well, it's going to do the same math. It's going to say, okay, what you know, take profit do I need to set to be able to get out of this sequence in profit, even if that means level five closes in a loss and level six and seven are profitable, right? So it's going to do that same exact math. It's going to treat the, the positions the same way Ghost Plus Real would, just it's going to do it now based on the real trades only, not the ghost trades. Um, so that's exactly how it's going to handle the take profit after two or three more cost averages in the sequence. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Daniel. Anonymous attendee said, does Gearbox have an exit question? Like, are you sure you want to close Gearbox when closing Gearbox? Because when looking at pair charts, minimize and maximize button is very close to exit button. Um, if by accident you press exit close, Gearbox will lose ghost trades. Therefore, it'd be nice to have a window. Are you sure you want to close Gearbox when closing Gearbox? Um, I see what you're saying, uh, but I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. Um, I will talk to my programmer, but yeah, I don't think there's a way to do that. Um, maybe. 
uh, we'll see if it would affect, because no matter what my, yeah, I'll, I'll have to research that one a little more. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Uh, Ronald said, so with Ghost Plus Rio takes into consideration the Ghost Trades, what is it looking for? 36 grips. It's not looking for any amount of pips, Ronald. It's, it's looking to specifically get out of an entire sequence and profit, meaning that if you enter on a level six, okay, and you were using Ghost Plus Real, it may need, um, you know, level six to be able to cover, uh, you know, all the way to level three would have been profit or level four. And technically these ones could have closed for a loss. So really it's just, it's doing the math to decide it's take profit based on the cost averages that already exist in the level it entered. So with Ghost Plus Real, there's no set take profit. Like double TP, the first entry is always looking for 60 pips. But with Ghost Plus Real, it's going to be different based on what level you enter. You know, Euro USD, you may enter on a, a level four, whereas, you know, on a GBP NZD, you might enter on a level seven. Okay, well, those are going to be totally different take profit points, even with the same settings because of the level entry and where they entered if you're using Ghost Plus Real. Matt Chess says, what does it mean max number of gear setting? Example, entry is in gear five and we have max number of gears set to eight. Um, means max open trade would be three. When that happened, then just not open next trade after it reaches and automatically close all trades. Uh, Matt Chess, correct. If your max gears is set at eight and your entry was at five, that means that you can actually only enter six and seven. The reason for that is eight is seven. Zero is one. One is two, two is three, three is four, four is five, five is six, six is seven, seven is eight. Meaning if you enter on five and you have your max gear set to eight, you can actually only enter five, six, and seven here. So yes, you can only enter these three trades. And after that, it would not open anymore unless you increased your max gear setting. So the setting Matt Jazz is asking about right here is max number of gears. You can see on my GBP pairs, I have it set to 12 as they move a little more but that is the setting he's asking about here. Cyrus, that is correct. You are doing that right. If you ever see a, that an entry doesn't match the chart, um, then you know there may be something uh, going on with the manager. Um, and it typically happens with slow VPSs that it does not always apply the proper settings. Um, it typically always does on a first load if you let it do its thing. But if you have a lot of other terminals open or a lot of charts open, um, sometimes it does not fully apply all the proper settings to uh, the most. We're working on building a, an extra check to make sure it does. Um, as well, we are working on more VPS solutions and updates to increase speed and uh, optimize the products. Uh, Nelton says, does your lot size affect your gears, meaning does using larger lot size cause the system to move up your gears before sending alert. No, Nelton, um, your lot size does not affect your gears. Uh, if you turn off auto trade and manually do a trailing stop loss, does it affect your ghost trades or the system at all? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, as long as that trade closes, it's not going to affect the ghost trades or the system at all. And when you said you turn off auto trade manually on that specific pair to do that, um, you know, again, the software can't make any changes to that trade, so it's not going to affect it. And once that trade closes, uh, the ghost trades will close automatically anyways. And he said, lastly, I had four customers on super sniper settings, 250 and 500. None of them got alerts this week. Uh, Nelton, that does not surprise me. Uh, this week was a, a more ranging week. A lot of pairs didn't really have as much volatility as we'd expect. Um, and due to that, many pairs did not receive entries um, on Sniper and Super Sniper. A lot of people on Swing saw a lot of great results, it seems. And a lot of people on Sniper may have gotten one or two entries um, themselves. Some people didn't get any. Um, and also, when you say no alerts this week, remember that uh, alerts can come in the middle of the night, oftentimes in the London session, and the alerts are good for six hours. If you do not approve a manual trade alert within six hours, they will expire. Uh, Chris Dan said, what does the auto change gear setting do? Uh, great, great question here. Uh, so you see auto change on Wednesday. Um, what this means is that you're looking on, in this case, on this example, I'm looking to only enter gears above four uh, before Wednesday, which means uh, level five entry, which means I am waiting um, if we go back here, I am waiting 
for a level five entry, which means I'm waiting over 207 pips. And then after Wednesday, I'm saying wait till gears after five for entry, meaning wait 300 pips. The reason I do this on Wednesday with the automatic gear raise is so that the ghost gears don't reset first off. So it's not resetting the ghost gears and it's automatically able to increase that level of entry. Plus after Wednesday, there tends to be more volatility in the market. So I typically choose to wait for a more precise entry. Um, some people may choose to turn this off. Um, that is up to them. All righty. Well, it seems like uh, I'm reading through. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I see some more questions here. Uh, Luke said, I've been training for two weeks now with Gearbox and I haven't seen more than 50 pips drawdown with three pairs. Is this typical for Gearbox or has it been an exceptional couple of weeks? Um, Luke, it has definitely been an exceptional couple of weeks, but we also have rolled out um, over the past month, many updates to the Gearbox manager, including updated entries. And the more updated entries and the better data we have to base our entries on, um, the more likely it is that you see less drawdown, right? Um, many accounts who do have some drawdown right now um, are in trades from earlier entries. And I'll give you an example. Uh, NZD JPY, we're now entering on a gear four earliest, even on swing settings and on, a, on gear five for sniper previously, um, this was actually two and three. Uh, so you can see when I say two and three, right? These were moved back right here um, for NZD JPY. Well, let's look at the difference in what that was in a trade entry. Um, so if you were entering in two, you're only waiting 49 pips. If you're entering three, you're only waiting 87. Now on Sniper, we're waiting 207 on NZG JPY and 138 on Swing uh, before even getting into an entry. And same with many of these other pairs that we increase, such as AUD JPY. I know some people had some problems with AUD JPY, same concept there. Um, so because of that, anybody new getting set up on Gearbox that didn't get into some of those trends that people have been stuck in, such as uh, NZD JPY, AUD USD or um, AUD JPY and NZD JPY. Those are really, these are some of the problem jobs and NZD USD, right? Anyone who didn't get into these, these pairs here um, early on in November, December and get stuck in those trends um, should be seeing a great day. Uh, same thing here is we increase the entries on AUD CAD, your JPY, your USD and AUD and um, USD JPY. All of these were previously, you know, back here, like we had talked about in, the uh, the same range as the ones above here. So we moved up the entries on this group. And because of that, um, that should also help with potential drawdown and risk as well as getting more precise entries um, as well. GBP NZD was moved up one as well in that manager update. So really, I would say exceptional few weeks. Plus, we're going to continue to always work to make Gearbox the most profitable product, the least risk and drawdown, right? That's that's always my goal every single week as I'm looking to optimize the data and how to make this thing even better. Um, somebody said, hey, Tyler, is it possible to have a different storing lot size for different pairs? Would it even make sense? Different pairs have different TD. They have been in the past. Uh, yeah, you can have a different lot size for different pairs. Uh, again, the manager is not going to be able to, to apply that for you. You would have to individually, one by one, go to each pair and change that. Uh, but you can indeed do that. Um, Tim said, if I notice that one of my 24 parts doesn't have, uh, charts doesn't have gearbox load, can I drag gearbox on the old way and it still work? Do I need to reset everything? Uh, Tim, if you see that one of your charts doesn't have gearbox loaded on, go ahead and drag gearbox on, uh, and then make sure that you set, um, your proper gear entry settings, right? Based on this chart. Uh, if you're not going to use the manager to reload everything, um, but you can also just use the manager to reload everything now that the market is closed as well. Uh, and it won't re or not closed, but don't do it yet. The market's not closed yet, but uh, once the market's closed, I would just use the manager to redo it. Or if you want to apply it right now, you can manually just put the proper entry settings in and drag it on the chart, which would avoid any of the other pairs having their ghost trades cleared. Um, Luke said, thanks for the explanation. I had gearbox set on four hour charts as opposed to daily. And this week it seemed to work really well. Any recommendations on four hour versus daily? Um, I'm going to tell you that there's been weeks that daily is hit it out of the park and I've seen people on four hour and one hour didn't get trades. There's also been weeks where people on daily, you know, barely saw any trades and people on four hour and one hour hit it out of the park. So preference wise, I'll tell you daily is always going to look for the most accurate decision on the trend in which direction it's going. 
Um, whereas the one hour and the four hour are more likely to hedge or play both sides of the market. And what do I mean by that? I'll give you an example right now. Uh, if we come over here to Euro US AUD, we're not playing both sides right now. Uh, not playing both sides on GBP, JPY either. NZD, we are playing both sides. Okay, so if we come over here and take a look at GBP, NZD, uh, you can see we're playing both sides of the market and there's buy two and sell two open here. What does that mean? It means that it is actually hedging on both sides. I'm playing on the hour one chart on the experimental account, as you can see, but it's playing both sides of the market. Um, and you can get that data from taking a look at that. Um, da, 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 da. Rob Carell said January swing setting six max pairs 0 0.01 per 1k 27% growth incredible 61 total trades and he had a 7.4% max drawdown Rob absolutely incredible January so awesome to see the results people are receiving with gearbox um, you know I, I love coming on these calls every week and seeing the, the success you guys are having um, Andre said, any pros, cons when using placing gearbox in each pair versus using placing gearbox manager that won't be used to trade. Um, Andre, if you're saying uh, to just manually put gearbox on the charts and set your settings, you can absolutely do that. Um, just remember that the manager does have the performance master mode in it. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the master mode is simply the fact that the manager can actually run as the single gearbox, um, which I'm going to show you guys right now. You see, is master true? Um, so if you were to not use the manager or even have it open, again, um, you can drag Gearbox onto each chart manually and set your settings if you'd like. Um, just know that if you don't have, is, has master true and the manager is not open, um, that it, it's not gonna work properly because the manager is actually now what is running the Gearbox. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure you have your manager open no matter what. Um, as it will give you the best performance update and speed um, when it coming to using the gearbox strategy. So just a big, big tidbit there. Uh, da, 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 da. Anonymous attendee said, I noticed that Euro NCD is not on the list. Is this not a part of the major pairs? Um, it's not that it's not, you know, on the list and not a part of the pairs. It's more so that these were just 25 pairs we were running, getting data on for a long time. Um, we have the most historical data on. You can use Euro GBP, Euro NCD, and things like that. Um, people are having a lot of success with it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I will start uh, adding them to my data collection accounts here soon so that we can get more accurate data on them going forward for the entire company. Um, but I have seen many customers. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I have seen many customers having a lot of success with those pairs as well. Um, now I see that, you know, uh, Tim Wright said, so just to be clear in each chart where it says buy and sell, that is where it'll show you if you're about to get an alert based on entry point for each pair. Uh, correct. Yes, that is correct, Tim. Like for example, if we looked at a uh, GBP JPY here, you can see I have a sell uh, gear four open and you can see my entry uh, after Wednesday is gears above five, meaning I need a six entry. So we're still uh, a little ways from my entry. If we were to look here, uh, we're currently in a four and we need to go to 300 pips. So we're, we're halfway to where I need to even get an entry in GBP JPY on sniper settings. So you can see, you know, that yeah, GBP JPY's had a 138 pip move, um, but I still on Sniper don't even enter until it's done 300 pips. Why? Because I'm looking for the most precise entries possible. Um, so again, you know, you that's all based on parameters and decision and what you choose to go ahead and do. Um, but yeah, that is how you'll know. And please understand that this will show you the highest ghost gear open meaning that once you get to a real trade open in the market, let's say your entry was a level six here, you're going to see level six open in the real market and you'll see sell five here, meaning it will not show you that level six is open on your ghost gear display. It'll show you the highest ghost gear open, which would be five. And then six would be in the real market on your physical trading account.
Uh, great question here. Um, Andre said, can Gearbox open sell trade on a pair and later buy it on the same pair and vice versa? Absolutely. Uh, we saw it firsthand here on GBP NZD. You can see it's doing buy and sell at the same time in the ghost server, uh, meaning the same thing can happen in the real market or the same thing could happen um, you know, if you were to use lower entry settings too. Um, so yes, Gearbox can open, sell, and buys on the same time or, or the same pair, not at the same time, uh, sometimes at the same time, but very rare. Um, but you know, during the same sequences, absolutely. Uh, can we turn balance protection mode off on a chart and set it to, uh, off, um, Yes, you can turn balance protection mode off. Uh, as for the ghost trades, uh, no, I see what you're asking, Alex. Can you turn balance protection mode off on one chart and set it to all? Um, no, if you want to turn balance protection mode off, you're going to have to update it in every single chart. Um, all right. It seems that that is the majority of our, uh, our Q&A questions here. So I'm just going to get into some data. Uh, uh, Christian, okay, before I get in that, Christian said, I noticed that at least one pair gives me error trading is not allowed, but comment allow live trading to check and also auto trading is switched on. Um, you, if you're getting that notification, uh, I would go ahead and make sure that your pairs allow live trading. We've sometimes seen this on, uh, people trading with the demo pairs, um, or, trading with a grayed out pair. If you switch from demo to live recently, you wanna make sure you're using live pairs. Sometimes live pairs can have suffixes, such as here you see GBP NZD CN, um, whereas a demo pair might've just been GBP NZD. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are trading as well on pairs that allow uh, live trading. Yes, uh, Matt as we have setting auto change gear on Wednesday. Does this mean gears change one up at midnight from Tuesday to Wednesday or from Wednesday to Thursday. Uh, this means Tuesday to Wednesday. So as soon as it's, you know, it strikes Wednesday and the markets on your market watch, um, it's going to raise that gear entry up by one by default. All right. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some accounts here. Um, one account I specifically want to go ahead and show you guys uh, that had a huge comeback. Uh, this account got stuck in some GBP trades early on. Uh, in December that, you know, it was just getting in way too early entry on um, as it was a swing account. And uh, you can see those GBP pairs actually set it for a huge stop loss. It went from 33% back down to 10. Um, the great thing about Gearbox is even if you hit some stop losses or you get into something way too soon and, you know, it just has a huge move. Um, the great thing is Gearbox's strategy can make that back very quickly. A lot of EAs out there when you hit stop losses like this, you get pretty, you know, just toasted and, uh, and it takes a while to make it back. Whereas you can see right here, um, we already are back at 31% now here. Um, so it was really quick to make that back. And I love showing that because it shows the Gearbox can handle some risk. And again, this is actually an aggressive account too, as it was running a 0.01 per 500, meaning that this loss is double what, you know, a normal conservative user might have seen uh, if they got stuck in these same pairs early December. Um, but nonetheless, the point was to show you that Gearbox has incredible recovery skills and you just got to trust the strategy uh, many of the times when things happen like that. Um, you know, so these are my 24, five pair accounts, 24 pair accounts, whatever you want to call them. Um, some of them I've been eliminating USD from lately uh, for the time being. Now, I want to get into the one pair data as always. Uh, we are starting a brand new AUD USD account. We did mention that so that we'll have the new swing settings as well. We'll be updating NZD JPY uh, for new data based on the new swing settings. Um, and then as you've known, anytime we see any of these accounts breach 25% drawdown, that triggers for us to increase the entry uh, on some of those pairs. So, you know, you'll see that we've seen some of these. And again, these are all $500 live accounts. You can see deposits 500, 500, 500. Um, anytime, you know, drawdown breaches 25% on a $500 account on a single currency pair, I'm going to look to increase the entries on those pairs. Um, so you'll see recently we saw that, uh, AUD NZD did breach that level as did AUD CAD. Um, and if we go take a look here, you'll notice that, uh, AUD NZD, we have not increased yet. Um, but now that it did breach that level, AUD NCD is going to go ahead and end up with entries 
just like AUD CAD and your JPY and your USD here. Um, and UJ, we're going to go ahead and bump AUD and ZD up here into this range um, where we bump it up one entry. And the reason for that is, again, data suggests it. Um, if something goes over 25% drawdown, I'm going to increase the entry based on these small accounts in the data um, as that makes the most sense to continue to get the most precise entries always. Um, but again, yes, we will be starting a new AUD USD account with the new swing settings and a new NZD JPAY account with new swing settings as those losses on those accounts were taken when these were down here um, where they had their earlier entry settings, right? You know, when, when they were entering back here. Now we're two entries plus up. We're waiting for a much more strategic and precise, precise move before we get into a trade. So we will be updating those accounts and getting new analytics on them. Luke Varner, great question. He said, how to set gears on an individual account? Um, you know, very simple. I'll, I'll go ahead just to show you. Uh, and I'm just going to open a random pair here. And we're going to go ahead and drag Gearbox onto a chart. You're going to see your inputs here. You're going to want to make sure you go to common always. Check your boxes if you're applying it manually. And then you would go to your gears above setting. Uh, so we just clicked AUD USD, right? So... AUD USD. We're going to go over here to this chart and we're going to take a look at AUD USD. You can see AUD USD. If you want to use Sniper, we're entering on a gear five. Um, so, what does that mean? That means that we're going to put here gears above four and after Wednesday, gears above five. And just like that, I set the entry settings and I can customize any of my other settings as I so choose, set the lot size. And I would just simply go over here and press OK. And there you go. So super simple to manually set the gear entries if you want to. Um, uh, Andre, there is an option to keep ghost trades from the previous week. Um, I don't need to add it. It does already exist. Um, it's simply right here. It says delete ghost trades at start of week. You could say yes or no. Now, the thing is, if I roll out a software update, uh, the ghost trades will reset either way. Um, today, I'm actually not rolling out a software update. for So for those of you who have your ghost trades set to not delete at the start of the week, um, they will not be deleting this week. Nick Meyer said, how is that Italian fella doing? He's making gains in the regular. Wish I could talk to him. You know, Nick, I, I got to talk to him too. His account's up like 300%. It's just insane seeing people do in, in such crazy things with gearbox uh da, da, da. do you have any data on the pairs you've moved gears up above like gbp pairs um i'm not sure what data you're referring to uh all the data is here on the one pair accounts um you can see when i move them up it's anytime the drawdown here breaches 25 percent on a 500 account so if i see drawdown breach 25 percent, i'm bumping up an entry um, you know, that's just, that's just typically my rule of thumb, but you can see that on swing settings, many pairs have performed incredibly. I mean, GBP and ZD, uh, was hitting it out of the park for a while. And, uh, you'll see that, you know, it was much slower in January than, uh, many of its previous months. Uh, I mean, it still did 9% in January. Not bad. Uh, ignore some of this history. These are old. This is before even it was running on these accounts, uh, November runs, what you want to look at. So November on, uh, this is where it was actually running Gearbox. This was not Gearbox. These were all different things I was testing back in the day. Uh, but here we go. Gearbox did 14% in November on GBP NZD and 16% um, in December. January was a little slower and only did 9%, right? Uh, but you can still see the data here and uh, how it's been performing uh, based on one pair of data. So yes, all my data is right here uh, that I base my decisions off of. Um, you know, so very important to look at that stuff. Same thing, uh, NZD USD. Sometimes I might bump an entry up too without this hitting 25% drawdown. And that could also be based on seeing other accounts outside of my own physical. Um, like for example, you'll see that we did bump up NZD USD. Um, even though it was just at 20%, it was still bumped up. Um, you'll also notice that we bumped up uh, let's see what else USD CAD 
Uh, even though it did not show over 20, I saw some larger accounts that justified USD CAD being bumped up. Um, and we did bump that up as well because there were larger accounts that I saw get into a move and drawdown that I did not like. Um, I also noticed that USD pairs started to trend a little bit more. So we started to make adjustments based on that. Actually, USD CAD, we kept the same. Actually, we did not increase that one. Um, as I'm seeing that that one, I might increase if it does hit 20%. So sometimes if they hit 20, I might increase them. Um, you know, but 25 tends to be my breach for where I'm going to say, yeah, we need to increase that by a level. If it goes <coughs> over 25 and goes into say 50, we're bumping it up two levels, right? That's what we did with AUD JPY. That's what we did with NZD USD and what we did with AUD USD, right? If you see it go over 25 and double that and draw down on a $500 account on a single pair, we're immediately going to bump that up to entry. So this is, this is where I get that data, right? Um, Luke Varner said, you moved your GBP pairs to gears above 12. No, Luke, no, I don't. I, I said that I have my max gear setting at gears above 12. Again, I'll show you this right now. Uh, if we were to go to GBP pairs, let me close out AUD because I'm not running it on that, this account here. Um, GBP pairs, you can see again, gears above five and six for NZD, but it's my max number of gears that I increased to 12 on GBP pairs at Euro AUD. All other pairs I leave at max number of gears eight, but by default, the, the manager should load 12 on your GBP and Euro AUD pairs um, by default. So, uh, Matt says, if I see that one pair is just one gear away from entry and I'd like to lower one gear so I can get to entry point, how can I do that? You can't do that, Matt Jazz. Um, unfortunately, this is why it's very important to set your strategy at the beginning of the week and choose to uh, be okay with your strategy and its decisions. You know, if you want to see more trades, then maybe use swing instead of sniper. Um, because again, if you change your gear entry midweek and there's no real trade deployed, um, again, it's gonna reset the ghost trades. Uh, Jackie said, when you say restart VPS is the same as restarting remote desktop, I'm not sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Jackie, the only way to reset your VPS is to go over here on the desktop and hit reboot. So just go ahead and hit reboot and it's gonna go ahead and reboot your VPS. Let's go back to the chat here. Um, do, 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 do. I'm reading here. Uh, if gear settings are manually set like you did, will Gearbox not produce the backup trades needed if charts enter new levels? Um, Charles, I'm not understanding what you're saying. If you manually set the gears on Gearbox, there's no problem. Just make sure you still have the manager open if you're using master mode. Uh, There shouldn't, you should not have pairs that say negative one and negative one on the UI unless your uh, VPS is overloaded. The only reason you would see that a chart says negative one and negative one, but you see in the experts tab, like I'll give you an example here. Um, I'm not sure where my Gearbox went here. Let me open it back up. Um, let's say you see on your chart negative one and negative one here, but you see that it is opening ghost trades in the experts tab. Uh, the only reason that would happen on the UI, um, and specifically look at the currency pair, right? If you saw AUD USD said negative one and negative one here, but you see Gearbox opening ghost trades uh, on AUD USD here, then everything's working fine. The only reason it would say negative one and negative one here is if your VPS is overloaded, if you have multiple terminals open, if you're using multiple other products. And again, we are working in more VPS solutions and optimizations. Um, but as long as you see ghost trades on those pairs, then you know the negative one and negative one is irrelevant. Um, the only other reason you would see negative one and negative one is if we push out an update and you have real trades open in the market. Um, sometimes if you have real trades open in the market, uh, what it'll do is it'll just say negative one and negative one until those real trades close. And then it'll continue to go straight. Um, Pepper Bradford, if we change our settings to not delete ghost trades, we're changing that setting, cause the ghost trades to be immediately deleted. Yes, if the market is open and you change any setting, any setting change while the market is open and you have no real trades open in the market, will reset your ghost trades. Any setting change. 
does not matter what the setting is. If you change it, it will reset your ghost traits. Molly said, can you check, confirm the gear sitting on AED, JPY and AED ESD? I found these are set at gear two instead of at four on default. Um, again, if we go over here and we take a look at AJ and AED USD, um, your swing settings should be set at gear four entry, meaning you would see gears three and above. Um, so you would see three and above for a swing and for sniper, you would see um, four and above for entry on those pairs. If you have lower entries, you may not have used the new manager since the latest update to get the latest settings. As originally, those were the gear settings on AUD, JPY, and AUD USD. Um, many manager versions ago, Molly. All right, I'm going back to the Q&A here. Uh, Uh, Andres, is there a list where it says what settings in a pair reset ghost trades? Any, anything resets ghost trades. Andre, you reset the VPS, reboot it, you close your MetaTrader 4 terminal, reopen it, you change a setting. Any, anything that you do that is not leaving that terminal open and not touching those settings is going to reset your ghost trades. Uh, what if I change my settings and ghost trades are not showing negative one and negative one, for example, they show two and one. Does it mean it restarted them or no? Uh, JS, the only time it's not going to reset those ghost trades is if there are real trades open. Um, but if it does show two and one, um, you're just going to want to look at your experts tab. Sometimes it can take a minute before it fully resets them after a settings change, uh, depending on how many other processes you have going on. Um, I've actually seen somebody change their settings and it take up to five minutes before it finally cleared their ghost trades and reset um, the sequence to be modified on the new settings. Um, Cause sometimes there's a lot of processes going on as well. Alex said, are you planning on making an option to change settings and not reset ghost trades? Um, absolutely. But it's not on the top of our priority list right now. Um, as right now our priority list is still advancing and furthering the, the performance of gearbox and the safe safety. Um, a setting like that, where it's not immediately resetting the ghost trade on settings changes can also cause undefined results. Um, so we are working on that. Like for example, if you change your lot size and we don't reset the ghost trades, then the lot size it takes is gonna be your old lot size, not your new one. Um, that's undefined. That's then people put in a bunch of support tickets. Um, so there's many reasons for why we clear them um, is because we want the newest settings to take immediate effect uh, otherwise people would have old sequences with old settings and then be, Oh, my settings don't match, uh, what I input and what the trade just took. Right. So there's a reason that we do reset them. Um, it's so that the, the latest settings take immediate effect. Pepper. Yes. Having any open trade keeps resetting all ghost trades. Um, but it well, not all ghost trades and only keep the ghost trades on that open pair. Um, so yes, having an open trade on a specific pair will keep that pair from closing the ghost trades. You cannot delete ghost trades if real trades open, um, besides on software updates, in which case it'll just pick up the old trades and manage them. All right. Great call so far today. I'm going to go ahead and get into Forex Factory, uh, in the upcoming week, as I see that we don't have many questions, uh, left here in the Q and A and the chat box. So, uh, let me pull up Forex Factory here. All righty. Let's get into the week ahead of us. Um, also, so you guys know, this is my birthday week on Monday. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be working all week anyways. I, uh, that's how I like to be. I plan to work all day Monday. Da, da, da. All righty. Let's get into it. We're looking for red folder news as always. We see that we have Fed Chair Powell speaking on Wednesday. Um, USD, we have GBP, Governor Bailey speaks. Um, other than that, that is all our red folder for this week. It looks like a pretty light week, meaning that uh, on many accounts, I'm going to go back to six pairs max trading on my moderate accounts. Again, that's my moderate strategy. Uh, my conservative accounts will maintain three max pairs trading, and I will stick to my rule of thumb of 0 0.01 for 1K, being that it is a light news week. Um, some conservative users may opt to go to a 0 0.01 for 2K. And some extra conservative users may go to a 0.01 for 3K. Um, 
if they so choose. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to look back at the chat box and see what we have going on. I see nothing else here. Um, so thank you guys so much for all of your help today and tuning into this wonderful call and sharing your results with me. I look forward to seeing you guys all on the next one and hope we all have another amazing trading week coming up. Thank you all so much for all of your help. And uh, I look forward to continue to deliver a better product for every single one of you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you.